guys, this is Vanessa Joy here with Shutter Mag, and I just wanted to pull up these pictures for you in this video so I could really illustrate them a little bit better, kind of pointing and, and showing you what I was talking about in the article as it's a little bit hard to explain in words without actually pointing them out. So right here, I am using a program called Photo Mechanic. By the way, if you do not have Photo Mechanic, you need to get it. This is the fastest way, other than outsourcing, of course, <laughs> to cull your images. It's faster than Lightroom. It's building off these small previews, uh, and it, it just loads so much faster. You don't have to import anything. It's really just fantastic. And the way that I use it is I use the color-coded system. So on my keyboard, I'm just pressing the number one. It goes pink, two, red, three, orange, and so on and so forth, or zero to go back to null. Um, you know, in no category there. And then I just thumb through, you know, with my arrows and go through and say whether I want it or don't want it, I go on to the next one. You can see some of these uh, because of where I've imported them. You already have the ratings on here. And then when you're done, you come to the bottom right and you deselect all the ones you did not select and then you're you're left with the ones that you did and you know you could do different ratings you know sometimes i'll do you know a b picks or maybe you know i'll i'll categorize the red ones and those ones are for the blog and then you know i can kind of sort by there um and you can just see how fast it is kind of clicking through here so anyway that's my my quick bit about photo mechanic if you don't have it get it, do it. Um, and then of course there's also renumbering and resizing and all of that fun as well. So the first ones here, um, we were talking about color and yeah, it did limit it to color temperature when we were talking about these because, you know, again, when it comes to color, there's a hundred different ways to do it. You can even see in these pictures here, you know, these are from the past couple of years and not all from this year. So you can see how, you know, my color processing has changed, particularly in these two pictures, I was sort of going for like a little bit warmer of a fade thing at this time, you know how it is when you're just trying to define your style. Um, as opposed to now, you know, this one was just, you know, last month I photographed this and this is exactly how it was edited. So that's, it's a much more clean look that I'm going for right now and um, a little bit more consistent. So anyway, we were talking about color. So these three right here, we're just talking about cold and warm. So this is my normal one. I'm just gonna pop that up big, as opposed to a cooler edit, which is this one. And you can just see, you know, particularly in her dress, her dress is slightly, slightly blue, um, particularly his, his suit as well. His suit was actually a, a blue color. So it's just gonna cool down really everything, as opposed to the warmer. I mean, between the cold and the warm, you can see a huge difference. The warmer, you know, the skin tones are warmer. Uh, you know, it's nice actually on the on the foliage and, and the grass and the greenery looks a little bit warmer and it does give it more of a, a softer kind of feel. So some people like doing that warm uh, look. So it is subjective, but at the same time, if you go overboard, oh, I just noticed that's actually a third picture, but it was just taken right around the same time. You know, if you go overboard one way or the other, then yeah, that's, that's incorrect. And you know, it's hard to keep that consistent. Consistent color is one of those things that just, it's, it's pretty difficult to, to have it across the board when you're working in weddings, particularly different lighting conditions and things like that. So that's what I was talking about when it comes to color. Uh, we were talking about exposure when I was looking at this one, um, and obviously there's all this white space around here. So technically, uh, you know, this is, a, you can look at the histogram over here on the right. It's spiking all the way on the right, <laughs> shown blown highlights, um, you know, so there's, there's a ton of that um, in the blown highlights here. And then, but you know, technically, this is correct. The exposure on the skin is correct. So while I'm, you know, breaking the rules of exposure with the rest of the picture, you know, they're super white, you know, it's it's a high key photo and I'm exposing for them. And quite frankly, we were in a hotel room that was just kind of a mess and I, I wanted to blow it out because I didn't want to see it. <laughs> Um, this one we were talking about focus, so you can kind of see this picture is completely out of focus. There is no focus point. I'm not focusing on the foreground or the background or anything. I just wanted this sort of ethereal, dreamy feel to it, and that's what I was going for. As opposed to this one when it comes to focus, you know, I am just focused on her eyelashes. I mean, there is nothing else in focus in this picture. Maybe a little bit of her nose. Um, and to tell you the truth, I probably should blur out her nose a little bit too because I don't want that to be the focus. I want just her eyelashes, her gorgeous eyelashes to be in focus here and that's hard you know if I look at this one I shot this at aperture two so that's that's really difficult to get that focus and please don't be fooled I absolutely took more than one picture to make sure I got the focus right because it is difficult 
this picture we were talking about eyes to mouth um, and posing. So they're almost there. She could stand to be a slightly shorter. He could stand to be slightly taller. But I really want the eyes and mouth across this line right here uh, to line up. And that's how I was talking about posing there. I'm going to jump down while we're still talking about posing to these girls. And we're talking about triangles. So when you have three people next to each other, you want to make this sort of triangle just like that. Um, or these th three girls right here. So it's up, down, and across. Or these three in the middle. You know, they're a little bit to the same height, but still kind of making a triangle. And then these three girls making that triangle there. And these three girls, um, you know, making a triangle here. So that's what we're going for with the posing and the triangles. And again, ideally, you know, it will be eyes to mouth. You know, eyes to mouth, eyes to mouth. Um, but you're working with heights, and there are different things that we can do to help that. Um, this is more posing, same kind of thing, trying to build triangles. Definitely a little bit harder. If I was going to look at this one, I'd tell you these two people right here, this is this is bad on my part. Um, you know, I should have had her step over a little bit or him step over a little bit so they weren't doing this totem pole thing. So this is a really good example of what you should not be doing. Um, rule of thirds here with this picture and with this one, you know, the subject of the photo is in the lower right here. I suppose this one, the subject is in the right hand third. Um, it could stand to go a little bit more over to the right actually here. As Then we have this one where my center, you know, I'm not following the rule of thirds here. It's just smack in the center. But for a square photo, you know, this works. And I do have these leading lines. Leading lines are something that kind of goes from the edge of the, the photograph into where you want the viewer to look. So that's what these pews are doing here. So just a little bit closer of a look at the photos that I was talking to you guys about. Oh, and here, this one, this was the bad example of, you know, not following triangles and it becomes this long slant down that way. Ideally, I would have had mom in the middle, but if I have mom in the middle and the bride on the outside, then, you know, the bride's supposed to be in the middle, in my opinion. So I think um, that's, that's why I made this decision to have the little slant. And this might not be something that your that your clients are going to notice, but you know, it'll bug me for the rest of eternity. <laughs> so I do hope that helps um, talking about creative subjectivity and knowing the rules before you break them. I will see you next time here in Shuttermeg.